Hey everybody, I have an awesome science lesson for you today. This is the story of a tiny, tiny creature that according to legend can be stood on by a full grown human and survive. This tiny, tiny creature weighs less than one tenth of a pound, which is about the same as this fork that I'm holding right here. This fork is in fact slightly more than one tenth of a pound. So this is a story of a tiny creature that weighs as much as this fork, and can survive insane amounts of stress on its spine. So we're gonna learn about the spines of a creature called the hero shrew. Now, before we can just start talking about this actual story, I wanna make sure you remember some of the things we've learned in the classroom before. So all of you have done the work about the different body functions of animals. They come in those little red fabric folders that we have. And it talks about, you know, how the animals reproduce and how they move and what covers their body. And if they have an internal skeleton, things like that. One of the things we talked about in that lesson is how all of us, all mammals, humans being mammals, have vertebrae. These are all the sections of your spine that protect the little cord that runs through the middle of it that delivers the information from your brain out to your body and from your body back to your brain. It's like the protection of your spine so it stays safe. We are called vertebrates, that's our classification in science, because we have vertebrae. We have a spine that protects our spinal cord. All mammals are vertebrates. All birds are vertebrates. All reptiles are vertebrates. All amphibians are vertebrates. And all fish are vertebrates. So all of those things have these vertebrae in our spines, our things that help keep us safe. Now, in most creatures, they look fairly similar. They're bigger or smaller, depending on the size of the animal. But if you've ever found an animal skeleton while you're out digging in the yard or out in the forest, I know we found some together, you can normally recognize what vertebrae look like because they're the same basic shape. They're these little connection bits. However, for the hero shrew, that is not the case. If you found the vertebrae of a hero shrew laying on the ground, you would probably not recognize it as a vertebrae at all. And that is what makes the hero shrew special. So let's get down to business. First, shrews. They are these itty bitty little mammals that look like rodents, but are technically not rodents. So remember that in order to be classified as a rodent, a creature has to have those teeth that'll keep on growing forever and need to be worn down. The two like ones right in front that you see on our pet rats and that you see when someone draws a drawing of a rabbit, things like that even though rabbits are not technically rodents. Anyway, on our pet rats, those teeth, that's rodent teeth. Shrews are not considered rodents, even though they're closely related, because they have little spike teeth instead. Their teeth are made for chomping and stabbing. They're more closely related to like moles and hedgehogs, but they're still in that same class of itty bitty fluffy little mammals. So these hero shrews, they live in Africa in an area called the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So if you look at Africa, this is a rough sketch of Africa. The Democratic of the Re Congo is right about in here. Again, not precise, but about. And this area is an area that is very warm and very wet. So it has that tropical rainforest sort of thing going on. And there is a lot of animal diversity in that area. One of the things that lives there is this little hero shrew. So the story goes way, way back that the local people who have lived in this area for, you know, longer than people have actually lived on our entire continent have believed in the past that the hero shrew was magical and that if you could catch one of these animals and save any part of its body, like if you preserved a foot or had a piece of its bone, especially a piece of its vertebrae, and you brought it into battle with you, it would make you invulnerable. Invulnerable means cannot be injured. Now, that sounds kind of crazy. However, that's old mythology stuff. And the reason that we think that mythology came to be is because this itty bitty creature that, remember, weighs about as much as a fork could survive being stood on by a grown human. The story goes that it has actually been done, although no scientists have tested it because that would be a little bit sick to just go find a tiny animal and start standing on it for science. 
But the reason that these hero shoes are so strong that according to the story, people have been able to just stand on them for minutes like with their whole weight standing on this tiny shrew and then get off and the shrew will be okay is because they have an amazing spine. Their vertebrae are a different shape than the vertebrae of other mammals, of most creatures, even of other shrews. So their vertebrae are wider, which makes them stronger. Their vertebrae are denser. What that means is that if you had two vertebrae that were the same size, theirs would be heavier because there would be more stuff in it. When we think about bones, remember that bones aren't actually solid. They're solid on the outside, and then the inside is full of lots of little crisscrossy bits of bone that make it strong, but there's still gaps in there. And in the hero shrew, there are less gaps. In their vertebrae, there's more of the crisscrossy stuff going back and forth to make it stronger. So their vertebrae are bigger, their vertebrae are denser, which makes them stronger, and their vertebrae are a different shape. Their vertebrae have lots of little like in and out teeth on them. So they actually fit together with the ones next to them, kind of like this, kind of like how a zipper sits together, or if you took two combs and squished them together, how they would have all these bits that lock in. Normal vertebrae don't have all of these locking in bits. And what this means is that if the hero shrew tenses its muscles in a certain way, it can take its vertebrae from being like this and squish them together, which basically turns it into one solid piece. It means that while they've tensed it in like that, they can't run around and move as well, but they're super, super strong. And this means that this creature could in theory, be stood on by a full-grown adult without actually smashing because its spine is so amazingly strong. Now, this has scientists all kinds of interested. It has me all kinds of interested. But it also has scientists all kinds of confused because what in the world is going on? Why would this species evolve this spine like this over time? Because it didn't just happen like, poof, one day, parent shrews that seemed totally normal had a baby shrew with a spine like this. It would have to happen slowly over time, little changes, because that's how evolution works. They have found one type of shrew that has kind of an in-between spine, kind of like a regular spine mixed with a hero shrew spine. It's a little wider and a little denser and has a bit of the interlocking things. So they think that that might be an example of partway through that evolutionary journey. And they don't really know why. Because normally you wouldn't expect an animal to evolve for the purpose of being stood on by humans. That's probably not something that happens to many hero shrews minding their own business running around in the forest. So it's not a force that should be affecting their evolution. They have a theory, but they've never seen the animals doing what the theory makes them think might happen. So they have no idea if it's true or not. The theory is this. The theory is that the hero shrews like to eat bugs, which is true. And the theory is that where they live, there are some palm trees, which is true. And they think that the hero shrews might climb up the trees, stick their bodies down between two leaves like this, and then use their spine as like a lever to pry the leaf bases apart and get the little grubs that are hiding down beneath. They think that having that really strong spine that they can tense and then like push against like a lever, like when you want to lift something really heavy and so you stick a stick under it and then push down on it, they think that the shrews might be using their spines to help get them the leverage to pry those leaves apart and get the grubs down in beneath. But no one has ever seen it, so they don't know if it's true. And it's really, really hard to study because, first of all, the shrews are tiny and they live in a big forest and they're hard to find. But second of all, the place that they live is a place that has had a lot of fighting going on there for a long time. So it's not a place where you can just stroll around and study and be safe, which means that these little hero shrews are like the land of mystery right now, which means this is the end of our story. Scientists don't know that much about them, so I can't tell you that much about them. But I can encourage you to check out the pictures that are linked down below of a regular shrew spine next to a hero shrew spine because it will blow your mind. It is super cool. For follow-up, maybe you want to research what regular vertebrae look like in a general normal mammal. Maybe you want to see if you can feel all the way down your back and count yours. 
and then look up and see, did you get the right number? How many vertebrae do humans have? Maybe you want to research shrews in general and learn about just them as a species because they're pretty interesting little guys. Maybe you want to research the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Africa and figure out what other animals live there or what stuff is going on there that's making it not a place where scientists can go catch shrews and study very easily. You could follow up however you like, but do something, even if it's just writing down what you learned, and have a wonderful day.